All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the Apostle Elders, the Great Millstone, who rule well. And salutations to all you brothers out there who are pushing this word in love, truth, sincerity, and humility. Once again, it's the Brother Shatya from the Chicago camp. Coming back to you with what I hope is another quick and edifying sit down. All right. And, you know, the Spirit's been on me to do a series on Proverbs, the sixth chapter, starting at the 16th verse. And it says thus These six things doth Yahweh hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and him that soweth discord among brethren. All right. And on today's sit down, I want to focus, focus, focus on. The first aspect of what Yahweh hates. And we'll just read it again. It says, These six things doth Yahweh hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. And the first one is a proud look. All right. And when you look the look up those two words, proud, it means to be raised or lifted up. Okay, to be prideful. And look refer to a a person's of demeanor their mind or their spirit you know in, in a figurative sense you know their their spirit their demeanor you know so when you just break this down in the layman terms it's saying that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai hates a man who is prideful in his mind and in his spirit and in his demeanor his speech everything the Most High completely hates that, and rightfully so. You know, because in in this truth, we have a lot of, I don't know if I want to say brothers, but you have a lot of men who say that they're Israelites, you can tell that they've forgotten their beginning. And you might say, well, what do you mean by that? How does that relate to pride? Well, you have to remember that. Well, just remember yourself. When before you came into the truth, you thought you knew something. All right. You know, you however long you so-called been in the streets or however many years you've been in school, how many degrees you had, how many wise, so-called wise people you've listened to. You know, you thought you knew something. But when the Most High allowed you to receive this truth, or what should I say, allowed these brothers to see the truth, all right, their, their pride was completely... Shattered. Because at that time, the Most High allowed the these men to realize that for however long they've been in the world, that they've just inherited lies. They spoke lies. They lived a lie. They thought lies. Everything was completely contrary to the scripture and who they really are. As a person and how the most high views them. All right. And because of that. They wanted to make up for lost time. So now they're reading. You know, they asking brothers, can they do sit downs with them? All right. They, they asking tons and tons of questions. You know, to the point where they might work a brother's nerve, but you know. They apologize, they say please and thank you, and all these other things, and they're being brotherly. But you see, once a few months and years go by, 
these men start noticing that, start noticing the, the portion that the Most High started giving them or did give them. They started noticing that immediately they were real good with Hebrew or they might be real good at, at memorizing precepts. All right. Or they might be a very dynamic speaker or they're really good with history. Or they might start grasping certain concepts and, and hidden knowledge about the Bible that even brothers who've been in the truth longer than them haven't realized yet. And see, that's, that's when that seed of pride, if left unchecked, or for some brothers that has gone unchecked, starts to grow and it starts to manifest. To the point where, you know what, let me get that in Ecclesiastes. You know what, it starts to rise and manifest itself until these so-called men claim that can't nobody tell them anything. To he was in Ecclesiasticus. Ten and thirteen. It says, For pride is the beginning of sin. No. Sorry about that. Ecclesiasticus, the tenth chapter, starting at the twelfth verse. The beginning of pride is is when one departeth from Yahweh, right? Because when you start that that when that pride starts manifesting, where you think you know everything, you're basically claiming that you are in a position like God. Because if you know everything, you don't need to be taught anything. Can't nobody tell you anything, all right? And see that all results in in that I don't know what name you want to call this demon. But it's the demon that can't take reproof that makes men or brothers start believing that, oh, man, that nigga hating. I, he just mad because I know more precepts than him. Or I can memorize them better. Or I'm better at the Hebrew. And that nigga just hating on me. Man, I, he claimed to be a brother, man, always trying to tell me so. Man, that nigga just jealous. You know? That, that's, that's that ugliness that starts manifesting, Okay? And it says, and his heart is turned away from his maker. And right, your heart is turned away from your maker because you, in your mind, you think you're God. You think you're all that. Okay? Not only that, you think you're above the men that have taken time out of whatever they're doing to help you understand scriptures that however long ago that you came into the truth, or these brothers came into the truth, all right? That it's like now you know them. Now you better than them. You better than these brothers who are teaching you scriptures that you didn't know before you came into the truth. Okay. It says, "For pride is the beginning of sin." Right. Because you're exalting yourself as your god. Not only that. You start becoming the or these brothers start becoming unbrotherly, for lack of a better phrase. Okay? Because you think you're better than them. Alright, men that have been in the truth longer than you. Alright, that have taken time out their busy schedules to help you understand knowledge that you didn't know before, in the hopes that one, they're working out their own salvation, and two, Helping to build a brother up in the truth, just as they were built up in the truth. All right, with men that that were kind and patient and understanding. Mm -hmm. And it says, "And he that hath it shall pour out abomination." All right. 
Because when the more, and we've seen this tons of times, when brothers start thinking too highly of themselves, all right, hey, the most high just starts taking their spirit away from them. You know, they go strong for a little bit, but then the next thing you know, well, maybe Esau can't be saved. Maybe Cornelius is an Edomite. Uh, there's no such thing as, as, as America being destroyed by ICBM. Not only abominations in the doctrine, but your conduct is just totally wicked. All right? Your conduct towards the brothers, that is. And it says, And therefore, Yahweh brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. All right? And that, you can match that up with, uh, I believe it's Proverbs, the 16th chapter. And the 18th verse. And it says, Pride goeth before destruction, and in haughty spirit before a fall. Right. So that's how the Most High deals with these brothers, man. When you start pouring out them abominations, the Most High is going to uh, send them plagues and calamities on you. All right? And we all know one of them that is that strong delusion that you should believe a lie. All right. And once that happens, I mean, you're I mean, you're done. All right. You know, for all you brothers out there or you men out there that are, are prideful for whatever reason, you, you became a, a, a leader amongst your brethren or or. Or, or you might have money, or you remember scriptures, or or you speak, or whatever it is that 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 is lifted your spirit up to where you think you're all that, and you're looking down on brothers. You better seriously check yourself, man. And you know what? I, I hate to even quote an ice cube line, but it's as that old song goes, it just reminded me. All right. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself because a prideful spirit is bad for your health, which is true. Because the most high is going to deal with you in a very cruel way. And that cruel way is having you believe that lie, all right, and take the Holy Spirit away from you. That's why King David prayed that all the time. Take not thy Holy Spirit away from me. And being a prideful nigger is one way that the Most High is going to take this, is one way for sure that the Most High will take that spirit from you, all right, if you don't repent. All right. Never forget the beginning of when you came in the truth. If you remember that, if you always keep those those memories close to you and in the front of your mind, and, and along with some prayer, hey, you you should do all right in keeping that pride demon off you. Okay. Because as I said before, you remember how it was when you didn't know nothing and you had to, for lack of a better phrase, be at the mercy of other men to learn things. So, uh, you know, that that's all I really wanted to say on this. You know, uh, I don't want to go on too much longer, but I hope you all were edified. And once again, I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostle elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And salutations to all you brothers out there who are pushing this word in love, truth, sincerity, and humility. With that, we're going to say Shalom.